Juego amigos, les voy a ser muy sincero, nos pasamos un rato buscándolos y por fin los encontramos, hemos oído hablar mucho de ellos, hemos visto mucho de su trabajo y por fin tenemos aquí a alguien que nos pueda platicar, ah, estamos en Boss Fight y eh, bueno pues tenemos a Eric aquí, please give us a, a, let, let's say the, 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 the round up, how, how the company started and, and, and everything. Ok, well, um... Almost everybody at Boss Fight were all ex Hasbro. Well, we've worked on Star Wars, GI Joe, Transformers, Marvel, all of it. Like we we uh, were we were there for years. We have a combined over a hundred years of experience in the toy industry. <laughs> we're sculptors, we're designers, we're marketers. About six years ago, we broke off, started our own company, Boss Fight Studio, and we. We had a highly successful Kickstarter. At the time, it, it was the highest reaching Kickstarter dollar-wise uh, for an action figure. It has since been be beaten, and that's humbling, but okay. <laughs> but we uh, la launched with our initial Series 1, which was our Greek series, collector series. So all of our figures, we're, we pay a lot of attention to detail and realism. Um, all the accessories come off and the, so they can be disassembled and reassembled. You can mix and match them with other parts and from other figures with other colors. We, along with our Greek series, we kicked off our customizing series, which is shares um, an array of colors for the base body of male and our female bodies. So you can buy those if you want to say make Superman, you can buy a blue and a red one, swap all the parts around and paint less. So it's it's just kind of one of those things where we we really dug in. We're all collectors, we're all customizers and you know, we all grew up in the 80s and 90s too, so we just we really like this scale. We love these products. Since then we've expanded from Greek to fantasy. Lots of orcs, lots of demons, lots of monsters and uh, knights and dark knights and elves and all that stuff. And now we're about to shift into uh, Series Z, which is uh, our twist on the zombie apocalypse. We also have a couple of licenses, including Sam and Max. Again, we pay attention to accessories and detail, uh, the style of the sculpt to make sure it looks like Steve Purcell's style. They have lots of articulation. They have additional heads with different expressions, lots of accessories, different hands. We also have our highly popular Bucky O'Hare line, which was our first license and has been amazing for us, which was an animation and a comic book in the 80s and 90s. And again, it's very collector aimed with different heads, different accessories, different hands. Upcoming, we have our... I Am Brilliance fashion doll line aimed at uh, young women and it's based around aspirational career choices. So our first figure will be an ornithologist. We'll also have characters like um, uh, exotic animal veterinarian and there'll be things, a lot of sciences involved and everything like that. Just recently had our Mighty Steeds, our extension to Uh, Vitruvian hacks into rideable creatures. So we had our Mighty Steeds line, which did very well. We've got, it, it's broken up very much like our hacks line, where we have our basic ride on steeds, like the, the basic horse or the elk in different colors. And then we have our creature kits to turn them into a Pegasus or a Dark Pegasus. We have our tack kits where you can put like Roman or Australian like western styled saddles on them we have our deluxe tackets where you can gear them up with armor um, these will be out later this year and we're very excited about these they're coming back from the factory amazing so far um, we also have different accessory type kits we've got a uh, unpainted kits to gear up your blanks so these these kits are all one color so they're for you to paint and put on the blanks or the extra figures you buy. And then we have our deluxe accessory kits, which are fully painted, and they come with all the stuff to put to gear up two entire blanks with with uh, fully painted gear. You made the, um, the collectibles 
playable. Yes. So <laughs> that's a that's a, that's a great uh, thing because it's collector. You don't touch it, but now you are uh, most welcome to touch it, to play with it, yep. to 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 change it. So that's that's awesome. Our figures are very poseable. Elbows, wrists, heads, um, even things like the Dragon Harvester's egg comes out of the belt. We we put in ankles, we put in double knees, you know, ball jointed hips. We're we're very we have an attention to it, it's there's always a balance between aesthetic of like the look and how much articulation you can put in. And it it's almost a a gamble to see how far you can push it. Because sometimes and sometimes you push it too far, and suddenly it starts looking more mechanical than you want it to look. Um, but we think we found a pretty good balance on that. And we yeah, exactly. You can make the, uh, every realistic pose because with the uh, armors, well, you know, they, 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 they used to have some kind of uh, movement. Maybe uh, they, they restrain a little, but they look cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll do things like if there's armor that needs to move or shift, we'll make it a separate piece so it can it can kind of shift and flex out of the way. Whoops, that one popped right off. Like that, our, a lot of our helmets come off. A lot of the armor clips right off, and it's just on on posts. So you can you. We also designed our line so we can reuse the pieces for other figures and kind of go forward with them because that's. One of the biggest costs in toy design is the tooling, tooling new bodies all the time. So it, if you have to keep tooling bodies, you start running out of money <laughs> really fast. So, you know, what, what we tend to do is we'll tool a set of legs or, you know, a set, an armor set that we know we can repaint and reuse a bunch of times and still make it different enough for the consumer to want to buy it. Because if you're just doing the same thing, that's only slightly different. You need it to be way different and way cooler and like really add some stuff to it to, to make it really different. One of the things that we really love about Vitruvian Hacks specifically of, of all the stuff we do is it's our intellectual property. It's our IP. We created it. We get to take it where we want and do what we want. And as a designer, I get to really go crazy with the designs and really push and draw the inspiration. I draw a lot of inspiration from life. I look through armor books and I look look at history and I look at fashion and I look at all I look at nature and I look at all this stuff and I kind of get to merge it all into this crazy world that we've created. And we don't we're not uh, we don't have anybody telling us this jacket doesn't have enough buttons sculpt another button on there we're like no it's ours we get to put how many buttons we want on it <laughs> no one's telling me i can't make a devil so i made a devil <laughs> i just probably need a, a fat guy over there right? <laughs> yeah we, we actually we actually do have plans for different body types coming up in, over the next couple of years it's just a matter of when we can tool it when we can put it out and how many times we can use it but we do, we do have plans for other body types, including short, heavier, for both male and female, and really trying to push it because representation matters. This is the, the, the actual line, or this is the, the new ones, what, what, what is, we're seeing here? This, these are basically the figures we, we have left in stock. So starting from bottom to top, <laughs> we, uh, this is what we have left of our Greek series in our web store which is uh, bossfightshop.com, so everyone knows. We do ship to Mexico, and uh, we ship all over the world. Our uh, Greek series was very popular, and we are we extended it four waves past where we thought we would, and we are sold out of most of it now. And then as you get higher, this uh, the last two shelves, starting with Elagor and Gomery there and over, that's our newest wave and that that actually comes out in the next couple of weeks we're just uh it's on the water we're just waiting to hit the warehouse and then that's wave six next to it which those are just mock-ups we're still working on those and above is where we shift to uh series z and that's wave one and two all of our lines do um 
linked together in story. There's a time travel aspect going where time is kind of a mess and it keeps changing and fluxing. So there's these time travelers who are going time to time and trying to figure out where everything went wrong. But we also have full bios on the characters. So it, it, this talks about the orcs, it talks about the character, it talks about their life, and then we also have these temporal logs which are written by the time travelers. It, it, it kind of expands on our story a little bit more. And the package design, I mean, I, I, I like that. Uh, it's it's like a horizontal instead of vertical as we are used to. Yes, we, well, but we wanted something because we wanted something to evoke those same uh, nostalgic feelings that we had. We all get when we see like GI Joe packaging, Star Wars packaging, stuff like that. So the card is actually the same size mm -hmm. as a GI Joe card or a Star Wars card, but we took it and flipped it on its side and changed the packaging so we could have a bigger space here for the to sell the fantasy of the character, and really kind of push that nice artwork and that crazy painting. And then we could also you know show off as much of the gear as we could our figures all do come with a lot of gear like this guy in particular you see the shield and the helmet and the sword but behind him there's a bag full of extra gear there's extra hands and there's an extra head there's a spear and there's a sheath and extra sword like we uh, we pack them out with as many accessories as we can afford <laughs> And now the, the series of Buck Your Hair, it kind of reminds me the 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 toys of the 90s. Yes, I mean, it, I mean it's it's very, yeah. Well, the Bucky O'Hare line, we actually decided to mimic the original Bucky O'Hare toy line packaging um, in scale and design. So while we did redesign it to make it more modern, it's still very, very similar to the original. So it evokes that same... Uh, that same feeling again with the the people who, who bought Bucky O'Hare. We also did the uh, there's the uh, Bucky O'Hare uh, Dead Eye Duck repaint that comes with the uh, lunchbox, and it's uh, we wanted to do that tin lunchbox to kind of give you that same feel that we all had when we had our tin lunchboxes of GI Joe and and Dukes of Hazard or whatever. You should make a thermos as well. <laughs> we, I would have loved to have done a thermos if we could have sourced a thermos at the factory. We would have done it. <laughs> This can be a lot of fun for kids. Yes. I mean, we got a lot of fun when, when the G.I. Joes had these uh, little uh, uh, weapons and you could yeah. put it on. They, they were really fun and, and this is yep. pretty much the same. So that, that's, that's the part that, that I, I think the, the kids need to, to, yeah. to play with it. Yeah, and it's, it's a, for me, once like G.I. Joe came out in 82, A Real American Hero, I was like, I, would, I got those toys as a kid and I was like, wow. I, Star Wars kind of died for me. I was like, whoa, whoa, what's Star Wars? I've got these guys, they've got elbows and knees yeah, and all this stuff, it. and they can do so much more. And I was so excited about them. And, and so that is something we, we, we did do really push and uh, thrive on the articulation. And it's fun for us engineering wise. And, uh, you know, our figures are aimed at adult collectors. They're, they're, they are age graded 12 and up, but we do have some lines coming up that are going to be geared towards kids and because we do want to get stuff out there for kids as well that is really cool and new. Where can uh, people buy this? It's a website, it's Amazon, where? where? Website is our primary, uh, our, our primary outsource is bossfightshop.com, which is our website, our warehouse, which is right in our offices, like our design offices right above it. and. The other ways to get it, uh, we do have a diamond diamond distributors, right. so comic shops can get our stuff through Diamond, and we do have we do set up retail accounts. So if there's any comic shops in Mexico that want us, they can contact us, and and they can contact us through the Facebook and stuff, and we'll get your we'll get the information out there, and we can uh, set up a distributor rate and get it out to you because we we want to get to everybody. We need everyone to see it. Bueno, nosotros continuamos. Esto es Juegos, Juegos y Coleccionales de Toyfer. Yo soy Ricardo Méndez y estábamos visitando Boss Fight. Nos vemos pronto.